you know, it'd be way too depressing. Yes. Yeah. Forget that. Exactly. Exactly. If you're, if you're making it too hard on yourself, there's no way that you're going to be able to see it through all the way to the end. Most of us who have uh, weight loss goals have, you know, a significant weight loss goal, and, and pounds don't just fly off the way that they do on TV. Um, so if you're looking to lose um, 20 pounds, you may be looking at, you know, 20 weeks. Close to half a year is is a reasonable weight loss for some folks, especially smaller folks uh, who can't burn a lot of calories. Uh, so the chances that you're going to stick to it that long when you're being absolutely rigid and not giving yourself any indulgences is, is pretty slim. But again, if you're going to have those indulgences, you just need to be honest with yourself about what you're actually having, how much is in it, as far as calories and fat. And, uh, stick to your budget the best you can. Um, anyone ever heard of a cheat day? A cheat day? Cheat week? <laughs> cheat season? <laughs> uh, November and December? What do you think about that? Is it all a thing, bad thing, good idea, bad idea? It's got to have limits, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there are pros and cons to it. You can certainly, if you're uh, trying to come up 500 calories short on your diet every day, um, and over the course of the week come up 3,500 calories short. The right kind of day can undo all that. So be careful with, with a cheat day. But the benefits of a cheat day is, again, the psychology that we talked about, but also um, giving your body a, that dose of higher calories, higher carbohydrates, higher fat, uh, can actually help to maintain a metabolism that might otherwise slow down. So um, whether it's an entire day that you label the cheat day where you just still do monitor what you put in. Maybe it's a, just a higher calorie allowance for that day, um, or just an occasional dessert or snack or treat. It's, it is a good idea, um, and will actually help your success. So really good. important to, uh, to watch your serving sizes on those days. I remember we yeah. had a conversation at the break room at Lifetime, and I was excited because it was my cheat day, and you had told me, Ryan, you're the type of guy that can undo a whole week's worth of exercise and dieting in one cheat day. Yeah. So just, the point is to be really careful with your serving sizes on that day. Yeah, I think most of us are those, you know, depending, depending upon the season, if you save uh, Thanksgiving for your cheat day that week, uh, you can probably undo a couple of weeks. So. Why would you use it? Uh, well, because a lot of those, well, a lot of those cheat foods are high fat, and again, fat's so dense. So if you, if, if cheesecake is your, uh, is your downfall, that's it's going to add up quick on. All right. Protein will make me bulky. True or false? If you eat more protein, you increase your protein, are you automatically going to? No. Sprouting biceps. Women? No. No, you know, even, even amongst uh, men, to a lesser degree, but um, men have a, a, a condition in their body as far as uh, hormones are concerned that supports muscle mass a little bit more than women do. Uh, but even for men, if you're eating too much protein and you're not getting the exercise that you need, if you're not encouraging your body or giving your body some reason to build that muscle, uh, it, it won't do it. It's inefficient. Your body. We talked a little bit about how many calories it requires to keep muscle mass alive and to, uh, to support that muscle mass. And if you don't really need the muscle mass, uh, your, your body's kind of like a business. There's no reason to spend money that's not going to make money kind of thing. And if you don't need the muscle, um, you, you won't build it. So you do need to have both the diet and the exercise right uh, to see those changes. Um, so it, it, for women, because because that system, because the endocrine system doesn't really support a lot of muscle mass, you would have to exercise extremely hard and, and eat an excessive number of calories and a very high amount of protein to really gain a lot of muscle. It, it would be very, very difficult to do that. <clears throat> Saturated fats. Now, how do you know if a just rule of thumb? How would you know if a fat 
Oh, Dr. has a saturated or unsaturated. At room fat. temperature, it's solid. At room temperature, the solid fats are the bad fats. If it's liquid at room temperature, it's good in general. Um, the only exceptions to that rule is, you know, when you're working with folks who have heart disease or concerns with about heart disease, the tropical oils, the palm oils, and the coconut oils do contain a higher percentage of saturated fat than, than most liquid oils. Uh, so we would generally advise against those for folks that are concerned with heart health. Weight loss is all about the cardio. I think we've kind of given a lot of clues towards that one so far. Um, too much cardio can actually be a bad thing. Too much it, exercise is a stress on the body. And we talk all the time, or you hear all the time uh, in news and media about how stress negatively affects body composition and increases cortisol levels, and cortisol levels uh, increase fat deposits in the midsection and around the organs of the body. And it's that visceral fat, really dangerous fat. Uh, body composition, you know, amongst distance runners is actually low, or is actually, uh, their body fat percentage is actually higher than it is uh, amongst many other, other athletes. If you had to guess who the leanest athletes are, who might they be? Bodybuilders. Bodybuilders. Ba Bodybuilding basketball is pretty lean. Bodybuilding is going to be the leanest only around the time that they're in competition. The vast majority of the time, they're not the leanest, uh, not as lean as they would be during competition. Uh, really, the people who maintain the leanest body mass are sprinters and uh, fighters, probably. People who are doing short, short bursts of very high intensity exercise. Whereas the body composition of a distance runner or a marathon runner really is probably not as impressive as most people might think it is. You know, they might be 10 to 15 percent, when really 15 percent is considered average, whereas most fighters might be, or sprinters might be down around uh, in the low single digits, four, five, six percent. Very, very low body fat percentages. Um, Cardio on an empty stomach will help me burn fat. I mean, if you have no other fuel in your body, then yes, you're actually going to be burning fat during the, the session. It's not going to help your fat metabolism in the long run. Um, you're not going to have any sugar there to, to burn during the session. And because of that, that session is going to be very, very short. So for the 15 minutes that you're able to tolerate exercise before you throw up all over the gym, you're going to be burning almost 100%, well, a, a high percentage of fat. You won't have a lot of sugar to run off of. But that's going to wear on you. Uh, the idea there is that a, a little bit of carbohydrate beforehand, a little snack, a little breakfast, a little something, um, will give you enough sugar to get you through the workout. In the end, you're going to burn, if you're able to work out for an hour or an hour and a half versus that 15 minutes, uh, you're going to be able to burn multiple times more calories. Uh, and whether or not all those calories are coming fat or not, the amount of calories that are burned specifically as fat are going to be higher. So um, I think... So what would you suggest to, because, you know, I work out at 5.30 in the morning, so for me, I'm, the last thing I think about is eating. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to go... You work out at 5.30, what time do you wake up? 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Um, anything that you could drink, a, a short little... I'm just saying, like, something on hand, easy to grab to go. <clears throat> what would they have those do? little tiny four-ounce bottles of orange juice. That's something. Basically anything that's solid.